A lot of the foundation money is a personal donation right. from Tim O'Leary because there was €150,000 donated previously by the foundation that they were told they would receive receipts for and they're unhappy with the level of detail. They have that concerns about the governance, they have receipts. concerns about sponsorship, they have concerns about the, the money was raised in relation to a number of specific projects. All of these things. So it's specific projects. All of these things. So it started, I think, very straightforward with the 150 grand and the explanation about where that was spent. And it's delved deeper into is best practice been applied throughout all aspects of Mayo GA and the County Board, as you say, regarding the sponsorship of McHale Park, regarding the amount of money that they're raising through sponsorship of the jerseys, of everything. Mm -hmm. as Are they going out and bringing in as much money as is possible? And it's got pretty bitter, I think it's fair to say, yeah. and it's got pretty petty as well. There have been some bad mistakes. There have been, there's been a constant supply of emails and leaks and stories coming from both sides and unfortunately for the Mayo County Board at times when they have replied to Tim O'Leary and his questions they've made that terrible error that awful moment when you're sitting in the office and you realize you forwarded on the email and not deleted all the pre previous emails so one yeah. of those incidents uh, resulted in Tim O'Leary being called a donkey which it feels has escalated this even more uh, then at the recent county final or at the underdogs match that uh, they played against Mayo shoot a donkey was played mm. which uh, again has just riled things up even further all of this I think was still very much a even though it had been in the national newspapers it was sort of rumbling along and people weren't quite sure and I, don't, I think they saw it as a bit of a sideshow and weren't overly bothered what really seems to have happened is that the Mayo County Board decided this week that they didn't want to answer any questions and they didn't want the media there at their county board meetings anymore to see that they didn't want to answer any questions. So they, w they proposed essentially banning the media from the county board meetings. And it seems that, it, I certainly know from personal experience, that having got bits and pieces and you know, Mayo supporters get in touch on what's going on here. The amount of correspondence I've had in the last three or four days since the county board decided to ban the media has been insane. Mm. The anger levels of actually there's clearly something going on there that they don't want to answer questions yeah about. now i i have to say that i'm glad to hear that because the idea and this happens quite frequently i've certainly seen it crop up over the last four or five years and i would attribute it to the donald trump style fake news mm. uh, introduction like the the post that the amount of organizations and i would include um, my OGA in that now who have used that hashtag fake news moniker as a way to ultimately shed them away from any uh, any notion of transparency so they'll use it to say that we have to get about our business internally the media don't deserve to be in there and we have to have those discussions away from the uh, public glare that is the biggest two fingers that they could possibly put up to my old GEA fans it's nothing to do with the with GEA fans it's nothing to do with the with the media or this fake news thing and we Owen was down there last night and he was trying to get comment last night obviously wasn't allowed uh, permitted into the meeting I don't mind that if on occasion they would say listen this is a highly sensitive topic there is a some threat of legal action here on this for this instance we're going to have to do that behind closed doors because we need particularly in relation to um, the extraordinary aspect mm. of the meetings that they've had, had over the last while I think that would be perfectly acceptable if they were trying to um, balance themselves away from ultimately getting sued by um, by any party. So I would understand that. But actually, they're using this as an opportunity to say the media are no longer welcome to these meetings. And they're also coming up with this stuff that, well, this is what happens. It happens at most of the counties in the country. That's actually not the case. Um, I, I, I have to say the, it's, a, it's a slap in the face for Mayo GEA fans. This isn't a private business. This is not a private business. The Mayo County Board is not a private business. They have to answer to the public. They are essentially the custodians of Mayo GEA there. And this is something they will try and fall back on is they are the representative of the Mayo GEA public because they are voted in by the delegates who are the representatives of the clubs who are elected by the members of the clubs. So they are delegates who are the representatives of the clubs who are elected by the members of the clubs. So therefore it all goes back to grassroots. And there's obviously a greater debate constantly about, well, who are the delegates? Do people take enough interest in who their club delegates are? Mm. But it does feel as though the Mayo County Board think they can just bunker down maintain their cosy little club where they don't have to answer any questions to anybody, that they're very much 
beyond reproach with all of this, where I think the delegates clearly haven't been asking the right questions, and Mayo, in fairness, has been very well served by the media, like the level of media coverage by the media, like the level of media coverage around the inter-county team is exceptional. Mm. There's three daily newspapers, there's a local radio station who provide an insane amount of coverage. And like what the Mayo News do, I would say the Mayo News is, in terms of GEA coverage, the best in the country. And they have some brilliant journalists down there who should be in there and asking these questions. And the thing, much like with the FAI is, when it comes to the financial side of things, journalists, unfortunately, have to believe what they're told in a way, because you don't get the minutiae of the finances. All you get is the very much the top line figures, which are generally, you're told, audited and presented to you. So it's only when an issue like this that somebody on the inside says, well, actually, mm. all is not what it seems here, that suddenly you can pounce on this and go, well, actually, answer the questions now. Explain this fully. But they don't want to explain it. And it is getting quite confusing now because one of the reasons that... So we've had two big issues this week, I guess. One was that's escalated as well on the county board meeting where it seems that the Mayo County Board came out and said that they had a resounding vote of confidence in the board that turned out there was no vote of confidence mm. whatsoever. And that was only exposed by people in the room afterwards going back to their clubs and saying, no, no, somebody proposed a vote of confidence. It was seconded. And that was it. Mm. Then they all moved on and went, great. Everyone's That's delighted. Job done. Everyone's delighted what we're doing. But also, Colin McKees has the story, and I presume a lot of this from Colin McKees was in advance of the meeting last night in terms of what was happening in, with the foundation. So they said at the meeting on Monday night that they couldn't talk about the legal action regarding the foundation because they had received a letter from London-based legal representatives from the foundation chairman, Tim O'Leary, warning of any potential defamatory comments made about him. That prompted legal advice that specific detail related to the dispute should not be discussed. So the Mayo County Board went and said, well, listen, we've received a legal letter. We're not going to talk about this. Yeah. We're not going to answer any questions. We can't. And that may well be the right and proper thing to do. That yeah. may well have been their legal advice. However, the foundation have come out and said that actually they had no issue with the foundation being discussed. They didn't want to shut that down. It was just personal to Tim O'Leary. Mm. There is another question. I think this will have to be discussed as well. Like, Tim O'Leary needs, I think, to come out and talk and explain exactly who and what the foundation is because it's very difficult to find any details of the yeah, foundation. Yeah. It's been the only other name I can find is Terry Gallagher, who is a foundation trustee who was named in one of the initial emails. But this is a foundation that seems to have a lot of money going through it, and it's all coming down to one man. Who are the other members of the foundation? Mm. So yeah. there's a lot still in this. Yeah, it'll run, run, run. We Obviously, when it comes to Mayo GEA, there really was only one person we could send to Casabar to get stuck into this. His uh, love for Mayo GEA knows no bounds, it turns out. Uh, Owen Shehan, he's, the reason that he's not here, was uh, made an executive decision over the last 24 hours that he should wing his way to Castlebar uh, for that emergency Mayo, GEO, uh, Mayo GEA county board meeting. Uh, that the media, of course, were banned from. So surely he gets something down there. You're welcome along to Elvery's McHale Park here in Castlebar, where Mayo GEA have called an emergency county board meeting. Now, media are not permitted to attend that meeting, so you might be asking yourself the question, why am I here? Well, to be honest with you, I'm asking myself the same question. So the emergency meeting is taking place behind those doors at the moment. Rumour has it that there is a shoot-on-site policy for any journalist that enters the room. You may have thought Ross Kemp in Afghanistan was something, but this is way bigger. Going into that room right now for me would be like living in the German Democratic Republic 35 years ago and trying to hop the Berlin Wall. A rather startling discovery here in the Kale Park. As you can see, a lot of sand here on the back of this tractor. Where do you think this sand came from? That's right, it came from the graves they've already dug for the journalists at the back, those journalists that they find upstairs. So that right there behind me is where the meeting is taking place. You can see a little bit of light peeking through the curtains. But if you're a journalist who walks into that room, light will never peek into your life ever again. So we're here at the shop and it turns out that controversially, Elvery's McHale Park only stocks yellow snacks. Where are the pink snacks at? Clearly the best snack. Also controversially, the shop is closed on what is one of the biggest nights in Mayo GEA's year. Couldn't catch me out, though. Bring your own food ahead of the game. And I knew it would be an extra long meeting, so I've gone for a Twix Extra. 
absolute 10 out of 10 chocolate bar. To be fair, he was bored. He was there for a couple of hours. There wasn't much going on. Um, but, I mean, he got to the bottom of the story there. Um, when things actually happened a little bit later on, which was that the county board executive started to leave the room, the chairman, uh, uh, Mr Kennelly, was among those who left and on tried to grab a word with him. Folks, I just grab uh, a question since media weren't allowed in tonight just on what happened at the meeting. Paul would be issued a statement. Gra you know uh, what I mean? That's what, the way, that's what, what's your own opinion on media not being allowed into county board meetings? No, you, Paul, as I said, will be issuing a statement and that's the way it'll be. Do you think it's fair that uh, the people in Mayo no, don't no, know no, what's you, going on? I mean, you, you have to look at other counties, what's happening. Do you think that other counties are right to do so? Will, will, it, will it be revisited? It's quite possible. Delegates will decide that. Uh, and in the, the vote of no confidence today, was that brought, the vote of confidence today, was that brought up again? Paul will uh, issue a statement in the story. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, that was on uh, in conversation uh, briefly with the Mayo County Board Chairman Mike Kennelly after the meeting last night. We'll have lots more on this over the course of the morning. Here's a bit of a flavour of what's happening on OTBAM on this cold uh, Friday morning. You're very welcome along to the show. We're going to discuss the latest events in Mayo GEA. This is the standoff between uh, the Mayo GEA and the Mayo International GEA Supporters Foundation over €250,000 that was raised for certain projects and uh, the foundation had asked a number of questions of the county board in relation to those projects and in relation to uh, other money raised and governance and sponsorship and the county board have met three times in the last nine days. Most of those have been behind closed doors including last night where the media were not uh, permitted to access it. So that was why we sent our media man, Owen Sheehan, to the scene. Thursday night, lights in Castle Bar for an emergency county board meeting. Locked away in camera for over three hours, it was expected that the county board would clarify the events of Monday night. Was there a legitimate vote of confidence put forward in the county board executive? And did the club support it? Well, there was no comment forthcoming from any of the attendees in the immediate aftermath. Lads, could I get a quick word on the meeting tonight? Absolutely not and certainly no comment from County Board Chairperson Mike Kennelly. Folks, i just grab uh, a question since media weren't allowed in tonight just on what happened at the meeting. Paul will be issued a statement. You know uh, what I mean? And that's what, the way, that's what, what's your own opinion on media not being allowed into county board meetings? No, you, Paul, as I said, will be issued a statement and that's the way it'll be. Do you think it's fair that uh, the people in Mayo no, don't no, know you, what's going on? I mean, you, you have to look at other counties, what's happening. Do you think that other counties are right to do so? Will, will, it, will it be revisited? It's quite possible. Delegates will decide that. Uh, and in the, the vote of no confidence today, was that brought the vote of confidence today, was that brought up again? Well, a statement the the statement did in fact arrive soon after, but there was still no clarity on pretty much all the big questions that remain. County Board, PRO, Paul Canan also declined to comment. This story, as you would expect, is going nowhere, and it really is the talk of Castle Bar Town. Well, indeed it is, that it's a sad thing too as well. It's not alone the talk of the town, the talk of the country, the talk of the county, that every, you know, it's, we had three years talking and, and listening to people about Brexit. This is as bad and it's a pity too as well. But I'm hopeful and I'm genuinely ho hopeful that it'll be resolved sooner rather than later. It's sad to think that we're in the news again for all, for all the wrong reasons. And, you know, the thing about football, the thing about sport, everybody has an opinion. There's a huge Mio following. People think they're right, other people think they're wrong, and whatever people think is their own opinion, but I am hopeful, definitely hopeful, and I sincerely do wish that the thing would be resolved sooner rather than later. You can almost, you can nearly literally hear Mayo GA tearing itself apart. It's, it's, uh, it's on everyone's lips, it's, it's the main topic of conversation. It's, uh, it's so sad to see because uh, Mayo GA is so embedded in our society here. And there's a, for once, there's a real bad feeling around Mayo GA. And, uh, you know, we're renowned as such supporters that can take any amount of hurt. But that's on the field. I, I think the hurt we're feeling now is different. It's, it's more serious. It's, it's more uh, in the soul of Mayo GA. And I think that has really torn people to shreds, really. I suppose, how much time do you have, really? I mean, it's, you know, it's a long-running saga that... Unfortunately, you know, only puts Mayo in the headlines for the wrong reasons again at this time of year. It seems every year Mayo don't win the All Ireland, they still somehow become the story towards the end of the year. My own thoughts on it are just that it's been handled very badly, probably on both sides. To be fair, you know, to give the county board a, a bit of credit, 
is that they have been blindsided at times by some of the letters that are, or emails that have been sent to them, maybe the time and right before meetings and that. But then they don't do themselves any favours by having meetings in camera and then almost immediately what happens in that meeting gets out. You have clubs then saying, hang on, you're saying something happened that didn't happen. And it just begins to kind of bigger belief as to what's actually going on. Do the executive know themselves what their plan is, what they need to do? And then on the other side of things, are they being pushed a little bit too hard maybe at times by Tim O'Leary and the foundation? Do you think that uh, Tim O'Leary and, and the foundation, the Mayo Sports Foundation, should just hand over the money at this point to, to Mayo GA and let Mayo County Board do what they want with the money? Oh, not by all means. I mean, to say, look, because if you're, if you're sponsoring something, and let's be, even myself here, from week to week, somebody comes in and look for sponsorship. But you feel that when you give something to somebody, if it's only a voucher for a meal, that you, you want to know where the voucher's going, where it's spent properly. You know, it, it's, it's money well earned by somebody. Mm. And no matter who or she is, let it be a thousand or a half a million, let's be honest about it, that money has to be earned somewhere. So it, it's, it's, it should be a little transparency, no doubt about it. Great. From that from money point of view, doesn't matter what size it is, if you give a euro to a child, you want to know where he's going with it. In the story. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was nominated last night by my club, Belly Cry, to be the next Mayo GA PRO. And uh, yeah, I feel I feel eminently qualified to do that. I, I, people are calling for professionals to be brought into the Mayo County Board the same way as you often hear people say Michael O'Leary should be brought in to run the health service. You know, the people look for professionals. I, I'm a journalist for 20 years. So um, I see it from both sides. I absolutely can understand the volunteerism and, and the, uh, the hard work of anyone involved in a county board, but I see that we've got to tell our story in a much more professional manner, in a transparent manner, in a manner that brings our community with us, and uh, in a way that certainly doesn't uh, insult any supporter of ours, whether they're a millionaire or whether they're, they're a season ticket holder. Uh, well, I used to work for CRCFM, the local community station here in Castlebar. Did a bit of work for uh, Midwest Radio as well and the local newspapers, but mostly CRCFM, where I was the sports editor. And, you know, we covered Mayo GA. I mean, they're the biggest show in town in, in the county, regardless of sports. I mean, soccer, rugby, sports like that have their place, but Mayo GA is what makes Mayo tick a lot, people will say. You know, if the county team are doing well, the county's doing well, and, and vice versa. I often found myself running into brick walls when it came to, to dealing with Mayo GA in particular, uh, trying to get into press conferences, you know, media nights before Connacht matches, before big matches. For example, I always went to the uh, Connacht launch of the Connacht Championship without any issue, and the invitation was sent to the radio station, no issues at all. With Mayo then, you were contacting them to see when it was on you were nearly begging to be let in the door at times we weren't let in the door we were physically stopped at the door it seems to be the only county it, <laughs> it amuses me you know you never hear it about Kerry you never hear it about Dublin because they keep all these things in house but I just think the fact that we are such a big county no more than the two that I mentioned too as well and they have such a huge following and um, you know it's just a, a pity that we have to, have to talk about it in the close season. Like last weekend, we had a historic moment here in Castlebar when Ron Paddy Durkin got an all-star, first time uh, Castlebar Mitchell's man ever did. And you know, it was still the second item in conversation after the rumblings of the county board and Mr. O'Leary. Oh, good morning to you. Good morning, lads, how are things? Where do we go from here? Pray, clearly, is the only place we can go right knock, now. Knock, hit Church. knock. Yeah, possibly. There's a, I see there's a few new routes coming out of Knox, so people, you can fly people in from Barcelona if you want to get in and pray at the shrine for what's going on. And I, I don't think you're too far off the mark, Nathan. It's, if you were disillusioned with the situation and uh, you went to Michael Park last night, you certainly wouldn't be feeling any better about the situation, put it that way. Not much has happened in the public eye because they've said nothing, despite the fact that they had uh, a meeting that went from 8 p.m., past till about quarter past uh, 11 last night that was dubbed an emergency meeting a statement that said nothing afterwards a meeting that included no media inside uh, this is a closed shop what everybody wanted to discuss this is not getting out to the public this is not getting out to the people of mayo it's not getting out to the wider country but really it, it doesn't matter about the wider country it, it does matter about mayo first and foremost here there are people walking the streets of castle bar this morning who are like what the hell actually happened with that emergency meeting with the most powerful people in our county board 
uh, they don't have a clue, basically. And uh, you will see stuff in the rumour mill. Everybody will get stuff in the rumour mill. But that's what we've got to operate now when it comes to uh, a fairly important story in the GEA. So they wouldn't speak to you last night. They issued a statement, as you say, which basically said absolutely no nothing. There's a degree of contempt, obviously, here for they're wrapping it up in a contempt for the media, which is ultimately a contempt for Mayo GEA fans, as I see it. What, what's the... We're sitting in a vacuum now, right? Like, there's no information forthcoming from uh, from AOGA. We discussed earlier that I actually understand that if they did want to, at some point, say that obviously there's a legal sensitivity here and that's something that deserves discussion behind closed doors before we come out and tell the public exactly what the plan is, whether that's changing uh, changing positions on the county board, whether they go back for a re-election, where they're at with that vote of confidence, what's happening with the funds, whatever it might be, I would understand that. But as we sit now... That statement has not indicated that in one week's time we're going to tell everybody what the plan is. This has been a complete and utter PR car crash from AOG. There is no two ways about it. They, to a point, had a situation that was quite controllable a couple of weeks ago because, as you say, Adrian, they had the legal arguments to lean on, and there was full legitimacy in that. I, I full sympathy for Mayo a few weeks ago when you have this big figure with a lot of money abroad who wants to pump money into your organisation who also ran this event in a country that have very tough taxation laws. He needs his receipts. He needs to see where the money is going. You can see where it's coming from on his side. But it is also unique from Mayo's point of view. People don't get elected to county boards because they know how to uh, to kind of deal with millionaires. That's not part of the county board setup. So I have sympathy for Mayo on that level. I have sympathy for them uh, keeping the, the dealings with Tim O'Leary behind closed doors because of the reported solicitor letters coming through. But I don't have sympathy for this weird blanket ban uh, across the media, the, the way they've managed to try and get through a vote of confidence this week, they've made life quite difficult for themselves this week. They were in a situation where it was controllable, as I say, but they've just made it a hell of a lot worse. And the, the question marks have just got bigger now. They, they, they had a bad situation, and it's ten times worse than it was when it started. It's very simple. From a PR point of view, as Owen says, it's been a car crash, because if you have nothing to hide, why try and hide something? Why try and keep... I the media out? Why not give people the openness and transparency that they need? Because Tim O'Leary and the Mayo Foundation are asking a lot of questions. They're generally quite specific about receipts, about certain amounts of money, around tickets and various promises that were made. There's a list of questions that need to be answered. Come out and answer them. And okay, the county board meetings can be, and like it's funny Owen says, you know, nobody knows what's happened. The general way this week has gone, we may well find out what's happened because there's been leaks of county board in-camera meetings. The doors were closed, but people have been recording them and getting them out there. Now, it turns out county board meetings aren't that exciting when you have to listen to one for an hour and a half. But like, I just thought it was incredibly disappointing that when you spoke to Mike Kennelly there, the chairman of the county board, that his answer is, look at other counties. Like, who cares about other counties? Yeah. There's a shit show all over the country and like this feels like it's a tipping point in the last month with Mayo and Galway as to what's happening with county boards and what's happening with finances. But Mayo should pride themselves of being different and being above what is the basic bottom line standard. It's one of the best supported counties in the country. They have over the last decade produced an unbelievable football team that people in Mayo are rightly proud of. And the county board need to be at that standard as well and need to answer questions. So to say, look at other counties, look over there, well, they're even worse than we are. Like, that's not good enough. Mm. Stand over, you're in charge of Mayo GEA, come out, answer the questions, and put this to bed. Like, because this is going to go on, and on, and on. And it's going to dog the senior inter-county team as much as anything else. And it's clearly going to have an effect on the county team and football in Mayo, because how can they do anything else while this is hanging over everybody? Now, part of the problem going forward is, like, what does happen next? Like, straight away, the obvious thing is people are calling for the heads of the county board. Well, again, it does feel very similar in a way to a lot of the controversy around the FAI. Like, if the county board, the current county board, go, well, who steps in? Like, there's no, suddenly we look around and we find the 10 best businessmen at Mayo and go, you wouldn't step in there and volunteer to be the county board. Yeah, chairman. well, they're not full-time ad ad administration no, roles. Is the key difference from and the FAI. There's a couple of full-time, and there's a couple of staff members obviously in and around Mayo GEA. But like, next in line will be the delegates who stood by and accepted all this mm. and gone, fair enough. There's no straws in the wind, on down there. I know you have to go in the next couple of minutes. No straws in the wind in terms of like what even the expectation around the next step is. No, there's, there's really no idea what's going to happen here. Like in, in the specifics of 
the O'Leary case. Like it's interesting what Nathan says there in terms of trying to you know not not look at other counties in terms of what they've done, and I definitely agree with that on the specific point of uh, those the banishing media from the, the county board. We, we'll get over that eventually. It's the the sort of idea though of what this represents for Mayo and what this represents perhaps for the GA as a whole. And I do have a little bit of sympathy for them on that regard that perhaps they are the guinea pig in uh, this in a, a mini revolution when it comes to corporate structures in the GEA. Will it now become uh, a situation where every county board needs to have expertise that can deal with huge money-making people abroad? Like a lot of county boards go abroad and make a lot of money uh, when, when they go abroad. Perhaps county boards don't have the expertise to do that. Maybe the first step is actually owning up from the county board and saying, we've made mistakes here. We're maybe perhaps a bit careless. We can get this sort of a Tim O'Leary. Ironically, the the one good move, the best thing that I've seen the county board do over the course of the last few weeks is actually Paul Canan, the PRO, coming out and apologising for playing shoot a, shoot a donkey in that underdog game. This is the first time we've actually seen somebody from Mayo GEA come out, hold their hands up and say, listen, I did something wrong. I'm a human being. I make mistakes. Not only are, are Mayo GEA human beings, they're dealing with uh, financial things here that perhaps they haven't dealt with before. And perhaps if they all just stepped back and were a little bit more transparent and said, we have a problem on our hands here, they might have the backing of the county. They might have uh, the backing of a few more people to actually be able to get through this. But no, who knows what's going to happen next, especially uh, with the situation uh, with Mr O'Leary. Yeah, part of the difficulty is we don't know if they've made mistakes. We don't know exactly what the situation is, whether everything's been run as smoothly as it could have been, and uh, we just don't know about that. No, and I agree with Owen without wanting to go all Joe Brawley on it. I think this does raise huge questions for the GAA as to why even we need a Mayo International Supporters Foundation that seems to be based largely around the senior inter-county team. Okay, it's great to get private investment into the county, and I do think, actually, all money that is raised outside should be funneled through the county board, and they should get to decide where it goes, whether it's to underage academies, whether it's to infrastructure, whatever, that it shouldn't be just, well, we're giving money, and the vast chunk of it is going to the senior inter-county team, but it has to because of the sheer expense. Like, we're in a situation where a dinner was organised in New York last May, and the organisation of the dinner cost 250 grand. The dinner itself cost 250 grand. Mm. They raised a lot of money. But like, we're, is that what the GEA is about? Dinners, five-star dinners in New York so ultimately that, that cost two, 250 that, grand. And that money is just lost out of, that's like an agent's fee. It's like, no, it's a, no, disappears it's out pay, of the game. It's to literally, yeah, it's to pay for the dinner. It's yeah. the organisation of the but day. But it's like some hotel or whatever in New York. Exactly. Quids in. So again, I do think that the Mayo International Supporters Foundation need to probably show a little bit more transparency themselves. They have shown the figures and they're the ones who've come out and said, actually, here's what we spent on the dinner. Here's where the money went. There was donations to charity. Here's what the county board were given. Yeah. Here's what they should be given. But who are the Mayo International Supporters Foundation? Aside from Tim O'Leary, who are the other people involved? Who are the people who are supplying money? Who are the people that are annoyed? I think we should get a full list of names so that they're looking for transparency on one side. We should have it on both sides. But like, where does this go? Like, a secret of county board meeting again last night. Is there going to be another one yeah. next Monday night? Funnily enough, there's a lunch in Dublin today, right. a fundraising lunch for the Mayo inter-county team at the Shelburne Hotel. Um, the one thing that I think it will do in terms of where it goes from here is that it will enlighten the general public who contributed to these uh, events. They crop up all the time at a, any county that's mm. worth their salt in terms of trying to do a bit of fundraising they crop up all the time and generally there's a non-questioning aspect of I'm going to turn up and give my couple of hundred quid to my county because they deserve it and you know I think they should have the best possible facilities etc mm. but there'll be more of a questioning now you would hope that if you are one of those people who's turning up to one of those events you're like who are who are this group that I'm that I'm uh, giving this money to and where's that money going to be spent in a way that I don't, I don't think those questions are asked now. Well, people don't want to be embarrassed. And Owen, I'm, uh, your sense from being on the ground, and I'm always wary, particularly when we talk about Mayo, that there's such a huge diaspora of Mayo people that people in Dublin and around the world seem to spend a lot of time talking on behalf of the people who actually live on the ground and their volunteers and the club. In terms, of, like, I think part of the reason the clubs came out and made their statements is that they were embarrassed. Suddenly there was this backlash that of all the clubs that sat by and gave this resounding vote of confidence in the county board, and they were like wait a second, actually, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. And we're getting slated for something we didn't do. Like, what's the sense on the ground in Castle Bar? Do people actually genuinely care about this, do you think, Owen, or is it some sort of a sideshow that we're excited about but that the general public don't really care less about? No, it matters hugely. And even just on the, the specific Castle Bar thing, the idea that Castle Bar Mitchells were one of the clubs that came out this week 
and actually said, hold on a minute, was that actually vote of confidence was huge news. I, I think somebody uh, compared him to, to Real Madrid or something like that, and I had a conversation yesterday saying, like, this is a, a huge club coming out against their own organisation. This was a huge moment, and for the people of Castlebar, seeing their club actually coming out and saying that was a big thing. But it's not just a bit of scandal. It's something that seems to have seeped a little bit deeper, I think. People are... Maybe it is because of the, the number of scandals we've had over a couple of years, but people are fed up with this. The, the, the number one thing Mayo people want this, at this point is for it to just go away, for it to get sorted out and for it to go away. But perhaps there is a deeper appreciation at this point that because we've had so many of these instances over the last couple of years, perhaps there is a deeper look required in terms of what the structures are in the county. Maybe that's a little bit unfair on Mayo, but it does seem that this one has just got a little bit deeper into the skin than any of the previous times we've been talking about Mayo in the off-season. This one is kind of dividing people as well in terms of what side of the fence you should be on. And uh, like this needs to just get out into the open a little bit more and sort of decide at Christmas because if this wages on into the new year, you don't know what sort of material impact it could have on the players or anything like that. They've been uh, quiet, obviously, as you expect them to be. James Horne hasn't said anything. This thing could just rumble on and on and on. And that is not going to help preparations if it goes past convention, which is on, I think, the 13th of December. How was your Castle Bar medium? Oh, <laughs> uh, it was lovely, actually. Yeah, it was uh, in Mick Burns' pub, uh, a medium and chips. Went down and got a, a sausages and chips from uh, Supermax, put it beside uh, just over three quarter full pint of Guinness, one pour, and that is a uh, medium and chips, a speciality. It was gorgeous. What did you and, say uh, that? Sorry, explain. What? I thought the medium and chips was the, was the sausage and chips. No, uh, a, a medium is the pint where it's almost full, it's almost full uh, to the top, and it's done in one pull, and huh? uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I thought that yeah. was something that we sort of laughed at Americans for, who came in and before. saw the pint being three quarters full and then just started drinking. You're like, no, no, hang on a second. Dave, is it because it's like closing time and they just have to get it done as quick as possible? Potentially, I, I think it, was, it did start as like a joke, or somebody might have pulled away their pint uh, without uh, waiting for it in a pub before, and they actually enjoyed it very much. So uh, he's kind of made it. it like he, he doesn't throw them out. He, he suggested he gave it to me, and uh, I don't think he'd be putting. I don't think he'd ask you to pay for a medium, for example, put it that way. I think it's just kind of a novelty thing that he does in the pub. You didn't have to pay for it. it. Like, I mean, it's... What? It a lot of free he's throwing out three guineas. What he wants is for us to be talking about the medium right now. I'm sure he's got his wish. <laughs> I, th I think what's happened is they've just taken a hand out of you all is what's happened. I was just going to say, is <laughs> there was so much it's good great. journalism for the last 24 hours, and then it turned out you were taking the free drink from them. <laughs> And they How were also we taking anything? the piss out of you with giving you this, like, Guinness that one pour. Nobody's ever heard of Did that Did you hear before. about that idiot from Kerry who came down <laughs> yeah, and was drinking right. the three-quarters filled pint and we was call telling it everybody about the it. It's like the greatest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Good Actually, luck. You're, you're probably morning break. Thank you. Good luck. Safe home. Come on on.